Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video I'm going to talk about Sigma's art lenses designed for full-frame mirrorless cameras, specifically the 35mm f1.2 and 14-24mm f2.8, seen here with the Panasonic Lumix S1R body. Each lens costs around $1,400 to $1,500 or pounds, making them more affordable than most alternatives for these systems, while in some cases delivering a unique focal range or aperture not yet available. At the time I made this review they were available in native versions for Sony E-mount or the Leica L-mount, although let's all keep our collective fingers crossed that Sigma also makes versions for Canon and Nikon's full frame mirrorless cameras in the future too. I've already tested both lenses in their Sony E-mount versions and you can find the samples and results at Cameralabs.com where they perform very well, but in this video I wanted to try out the L-mount versions on the Panasonic Lumix S1R as they greatly expand the options available for that system. The Lumix S bodies are part of the L-mount alliance with Leica and Sigma which allow their bodies and lenses to all be interchangeable, but when the partnership was announced in late 2018, only Leica and Panasonic actually had any products. And while the Lumix S bodies can in theory use any Leica L-mount lens, their high prices ruled them out for many owners. So as far as most Lumix S owners were concerned, they were limited to Panasonic's own native lenses, which numbered three at the time I made this review. The 24-105mm f4 standard zoom, the 70-200mm f4 telephoto zoom, and the 50mm f1.4 standard prime. The two zooms are fine lenses that do need to be part of any catalogue going forward, but they're not particularly exciting. Meanwhile, the 50mm Prime may be very sharp, but at around $2,300 is one of the most expensive standard lenses to date. Now, I think this initial selection and pricing may have put some people off buying into Lumix S, which is a shame as they're really great bodies just crying out for more lenses, especially at the more affordable end of the scale. The Sigma art lenses literally transform the system so far. Here's the Lumix S 24-105mm f4 zoom on the left, now joined by the Sigma 35mm f1.2 art in the middle. The 35mm f1.2 may deliver traditional mild wide angle coverage, but with an ultra fast focal ratio that makes it unique in the market, let alone within the L mount system. Then there's the 14 to 24 mm f2.8 art on the right, a fairly common range and aperture at the high end. Indeed, Sigma has several versions available for DSLR mounts, but again, it's a unique lens in the native L mount system. In fact, it becomes the widest L mount lens to date, so will also pique the interest of Leica body owners. Best of all though, both lenses become some of the most affordable options for the L mount system so far, making them both exotic and attainable. When testing the E-mount versions on the Sony A7 bodies, I really noticed how their heft felt more than a little front heavy in your hands, the inevitability of fitting a lot of glass to the front of a compact body. But Panasonic opted for a more substantial design for its Lumix S cameras, more akin to a semi-pro DSLR in size and build, and as such feels much better balanced with either of the Sigma art lenses. Here's the Sigma 14-24mm f2.8 art lens on the Lumix S1R body. And now here's the 35mm f1.2 art on the Lumix S1R body again. As native lenses, both art models will work on the L-mount bodies without adapters, but I was curious to see how their autofocus performance measured up. So here's a quick test showing each at their maximum aperture, focusing between two distances. First up, the Lumix S 24-105 f4 at 35mm f4 for reference. The Lumix S bodies employ contrast-based autofocus, so they can be a little hunting as they settle on the target, but the process is pretty swift here. Now for the Sigma 35mm f1.2 art, open to its maximum aperture of f1.2. Now despite the considerably shallower depth of field compared to the zoom at f4, the Sigma lens is focusing impressively quickly and confidently on the Lumix S1R body, perhaps even a bit faster than Panasonic's own zoom. What do you think? Now it's the turn of the Sigma 14-24mm art at 24mm f2.8. Now this isn't a huge challenge for a camera, but you can still see how quickly and confidently the native Sigma lenses are focusing on the Lumix S1R body. I was really impressed by this performance and it bodes well for the future native models. I also hope this is what we can expect from the existing art primes which are being re-released in the L mount. What about the image quality? Here's a bunch of sample images I took with both lenses mounted on a Lumix S1R. They're all JPEGs out of camera, starting with the 14 to 24 mm f2.8 art, which remember becomes the widest option from any brand for the L mount at the time I made this review. And thanks to Sigma's competitive pricing, you won't have to pay through the nose for it either. 
In terms of quality, the 14 to 24 is delivering crisp results across the frame here, even wide open, with attractive diffraction spikes when closed down, and there's even some potential for shallow depth of field effects so long as you're focusing at a close range. Now it's the turn of the 35mm f1.2 art, which, as you'd hope, is capable of stunningly shallow depth of field effects, but again coupled with very sharp details across the frame. It's fantastic for environmental portraits as well as stylish still life shots, but can also simply work well as a mild wide angle lens. Both lenses have more than enough resolution for the Lumix S1R body, and if you'd like a closer look, you can download any of my sample images via the reviews for each lens at CameraLabs.com. How about for video? Here's the 35mm f1.2R on the Lumix S1R body, of course set to f1.2, pulling focus with the touch screen between near and far. Now the combination of a punishingly shallow depth of field coupled with the contrast based autofocus of the Lumix S bodies means it's not always the most confident autofocus pull, but you can easily see the potential for dramatic video, especially with manual focus pulls. Hmm, that's got me thinking, could I vlog with either of these lenses? Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs and this is another floating head of doom, I mean quick vlogging test for you. This time with the Sigma 35mm f1.2 art lens. I couldn't resist this in its native mount on a Panasonic Lumix S1R, which is what I'm filming with here in 4K. So the body has built in stabilization, which should hopefully be allowing me to hold this combination fairly smoothly. And it's using Panasonic's DFD autofocus to try and keep me sharp. But do remember that this is an extremely bright lens, very, very shallow depth of field. So it's going to be quite a challenge for it to maintain that consistently. But the reason I'm showing you this, other than to frighten you with my giant head, is that potential for that blurry background. I mean, look at it, completely obliterated everything around me. And that's what you get with an f1.2 focal ratio. And this lens is also natively available in the Sony E mounts. And if you're interested in how it performs, spoiler alert, rather well, then check out my full review of it at cameralabs.com. But really the first part of this video was just as a response to camera conspiracies who says he doesn't care about your blurry background. Well, that's because that blurry background is not as blurry as this. This is as blurry as it gets. Anyway, I can literally not hold this lens and camera any longer. Uh, it's so heavy holding it at arm's length. So I'm gonna to switch to something more practical, the 14 to 24 millimeter, which is the second uh, native lens that Sigma does for the L-mount. Okay, so now I've switched to the Sigma R 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 a 24mm f2.8 and this is a really nice focal length on full frame for vlogging because you get to see a bit of your environment. An f2.8 on full frame even at 24mm should still be able to deliver a little bit of blowing in the background if that's what you want and it is what I want. I have to say I am a bit of a sucker for a shallow depth of field. Now again, both the 14 to 24 2.8 and the 35mm f1.2, both art lenses, are available natively in the Leica L mount and the Sony E mount. And that means they're not adapted, they are actually native to those mirrorless mounts. So I'm really excited to see it because this becomes the widest zoom, the widest lens that's, uh, that's available for the L-Man system, um, and it's affordable too. I mean, compared to what, say, Panasonic's brought out so far, or, of course, going to the stratospheric heights of Leica's own lenses. Both of those lenses uh, from Sigma should set you back approximately 14 to $1,500 or pounds, which is pretty reasonable for the degree of performance that they're offering. But of course, this lens zooms a lot wider, so let's see what you can do at 14 mil. Cool, now you can see absolutely everything around you. This is the kind of focal length you want to vlog at if you want to see absolutely everything, whether you're in a shopping street in Brighton or hiking up some exciting mountain or wherever you may end up finding yourself. And of course, this is also a fantastic lens for photography, as you can see from, again, my reviews at cameralabs.com. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Sigma art lenses transform the L-mount system, particularly for Lumix S owners who now have access to a broad collection of affordable, high-performance lenses. Sure, they've always been able to fit one of Leica's modest collection of existing L-mount lenses, but they're just so expensive, I can't imagine anyone doing it. So until the cavalry, I mean Sigma, rode to the rescue, Lumix S owners only realistically had three native lenses to choose from at the time I made this video anyway, courtesy of Panasonic itself. Now, they're perfectly good options, but it's hard to get excited about or indeed invest in a system that's in its infancy.
But by the time you watch this, Sigma will have begun re-releasing all of its art primes in the native L mount, hugely expanding the options and overall desirability of the system. In fact, it's amazing how much more viable Lumix S becomes with just those first two art lenses. The 14-24mm f2.8 not only zooms wider than anything in the native L mount to date, but costs almost one quarter of the Leica 16-35mm while also being around a stop faster. Leica also has a 35mm prime of its own, but at f2 it's over a stop dimmer than the Sigma 35mm f1.2 art, and three times the price too. In fact, the Sigma 35mm 1.2 is roughly two thirds the price of Panasonic's 50mm 1.4, while again being a bit brighter, so if you're after a fast prime for a relatively standard use, it's a compelling alternative. In fact, I'd say both of these Sigma art lenses are pretty much no-brainers for every Lumix S owner. I know I'd be investing in them as soon as I could. And this is the key behind Sigma's deserved success with its art lenses, to deliver excellent, even aspirational quality at a relatively affordable price, while also having some fun with focal lengths, apertures or ranges that aren't always available. Sony's E-mount greatly benefited from Sigma's native full-frame mirrorless lenses, but while they join an established collection of options for Sony owners, they literally fill crucial gaps for L-mount that previously didn't exist or were simply out of reach. And while I appreciated the quality of the art lenses on Sony cameras, they simply make much more physical sense on the more substantial Lumix S bodies. When I first tested the Lumix S cameras, I was struck by their size and heft, which was not dissimilar to a semi-pro DSLR like a Canon 5D or Nikon D850. This makes them relatively large for a mirrorless camera, but perfectly suited for balancing large full-frame lenses. The 35mm f1.2 in particular felt front-heavy to me on a Sony a7 body, but perfectly at home on a Lumix S. In fact, I loved going out shooting with the S1R accompanied by both Sigma art lenses. At last, this is the partnership and potential promised by the L-Mount Alliance, and it should really make you take a very serious second look at the Lumix S bodies. Sigma may have taken its time getting ready, but has now arrived at the party and it's just got a lot more exciting. P.S. Sigma's also released an L-mount camera of its own, the FP, which becomes the smallest full-framer to date and just crying out to be rigged up for filming, but that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed this one and as always you can support me with a like, a follow, a coffee, or by treating yourself to a Camera Labs t-shirt or to my in-camera photography book and there's links for all of that below. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.